Hi, this is Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews on How To, and on today's video, we'll be taking a look at the BIOS on the Acer Aspire A515 series, and also how to actually access the BIOS. Keep watching to find out how. Okay, so in today's video, we'll be taking a look at the Acer Aspire A515 series. This particular model is the A515-43, and is an AMD-based system. The BIOS on this is uh, pretty basic, so we'll be doing some filming on it, uh, unfortunately, directly from the camera, because uh, we can't really get an output from this, so uh, yeah, do bear with us on the actual photography, but essentially it should give you all the information you need to know and what settings are actually in the BIOS. So first of all, you're probably wondering, well, how do you actually get into the BIOS? Well, there's various ways of doing it. The first one is to just tap the F2 key whilst the system is actually being initialized or booting. That will take you straight into the BIOS, which we'll show you shortly. But another way of doing it is actually if you're in Windows already and you're not too sure, what you can do is just go over to the Start button on the bottom left-hand corner, press and hold the Shift key, then press to get the menu up, then go to the Power icon, click on that, and then choose restart. Keep on holding the shift key whilst pressing it and the screen will go through. It'll say it's like, please wait. And just keep the button held until you get the next menu, which now you can release the key. So then you get choose an option, go into troubleshoot. And from troubleshoot, you've then got the option for advanced options. In advanced options, there's a few sections here, but the one we want is the one on the right hand side, which says UEFI firmware settings. So essentially this means the BIOS effectively. So click on that one and it will restart into the BIOS. You have to agree to it, so click on restart and then the system will shut down and then reboot into the BIOS. Now unfortunately this won't be shown on our capture card, so we'll have to change the camera angle so you can actually see what is going on. Okay, so first of all, this is the uh, the bar screen, as you can see. So this is the first thing you see. So in the top, we've got the uh, inside H20 setup utility, as you can see there, and we've got various options. Now you can't use the actual trackpad on this, so this is all done via key presses, and this is done using the up, down, left, right arrow keys, and also the enter key. There are also some other options, which you can probably see in the bottom of the screen. So F1 is help, escape is exit, up, down, left, right is select items or select menu. F5 and F6 are to change the values in some sections. Enter is select or to access a submenu. F9 is to set up defaults. And F10 is save and exit. So I'll try and get some close-ups of those so you can see these a little bit better. But essentially, those will be there pretty much all the time. So on this first screen, we've got our information. So we've got our CPU info at the top. And it's Ryzen 5 3500U with Radeon Vega mobile graphics. You have the system BIOS version, so at the moment we're on version V1.11, which actually is the latest version. The date actually on this BIOS does seem to be a little bit misleading from what is actually on Acer's site. I'll put some links to Acer's site for the actual BIOS updates for this particular model. So if you want to upgrade yours, you certainly can do from there. We have done a video on that, which we'll link also, and there will be a link on the YouTube cards. So going down a little bit further, we've got our HDD models. So we've got model name in the first two bays, which is zero and zero. Our HD01 model is this one here. And you've got the serial number for the drives, etc. SATA mode is AHCI, and our total memory is registered as 16384 megabytes. Also, you've got your serial numbers. So if you're looking to do some sort of warranty work, then you can get your serial numbers and asset tag numbers, product names, etc from this section of the menu. So that's it for the information window. So let's go using the arrow keys. We'll press one to the right, and then that'll take us into the main screen. So in this screen, we can change our system time. If you want to do that, just press enter, type in a number, and you can change it. And that'll go through. If you want to change the date, press the down arrow, and you can select the date and change it. So if we type in 03, you can set the date accordingly. Just type over what you want and press enter to take you into the next part of the menu. Next up, we've got network booting. So if you want to enable network booting, press enter. Options are enabled or disabled. We don't use that, so we'll leave that as disabled. F12 boot menu. Uh, if you're often booting from USB devices or other drives, uh, maybe you want to do some sort of virtualization or something, then you can choose that there. So F12 boot menu, again, press enter. And options are enabled or disabled. Next up, we've got Wake on LAN. So if you want to use Wake on LAN, again, press enter. Enable, disabled, you get the general idea there. 
USB wake up from S4 support, enabled or disabled. Again, if you want to have that, you can enable it easily. Function key behavior is probably one you may wish to change. So on the top row of the keyboard, there are some function keys, which also double up as also media keys. So there's one for sleep, uh, for turning the Wi-Fi on and off, brightness, etc., etc. So if you are regularly using function keys, then you can switch that so that they are function keys. So press enter, press up, change to function key, press enter. So now the defaults will be function keys. So if you want to use F5 to refresh and that kind of stuff, then you can certainly do that. I prefer to use the media keys, so I'm going to change that back to media keys so I can use them how I want. Lid open resume. Uh, there is a sensor actually in the lid, so if the lid's opened or closed, you can wake up on that. So you, can, you choose enabled or disabled. So press enter, enabled, disabled. Um, I'll leave it enabled. Wake on USB while lid closed. That is also an option. So again, usual deal, press enter, select which you want. D2D recovery, so that is basically for the Acer disk to disk system recovery. If you want to have that enabled, then uh, you can set up so if you've got a USB or a media source with the recovery system on it, then whilst the system is booting, you can press the Alt key and F10 uh, during the post to automatically go into the recovery. Obviously, if you've got your media keys set as the function key behavior, you'll need to change that to the F keys or function keys to enable that to work. Next up is going to be a little bit of a bone of contention for some people. This is the keyboard lighting timeout, so you can set it to disabled or enabled. There is only a default timeout of about 30 seconds. This particular model doesn't have the illuminated keyboard, so regardless of which we set it to, it makes no difference at all. But if you have got an illuminated keyboard and you want to either have it turned off or turned on, that is where you can choose to do it. Next up, we've got fast boot. Uh, we've currently got it disabled. You can choose enabled or disabled. Uh, moving down, you've got the real-time clock reset. Um, I'm not really sure why you'd need to use this. If you have got any idea why you'd need to use it, let us know in the comment section. Be glad to know. But essentially what this does is to enable or disable the real-time clock reset uh, from a hotkey. So basically you can press the power button for 10 seconds uh, when you're starting up the system and it will reset the real-time clock. Very strange. Never known why you'd need that, but still, it is there. So next up, if we press the right arrow key, you go to advanced. Not a great deal here. This is mostly for your virtualization configurations. So first one, we've got the AMD SVM. So that basically allows the uh, AMD secure virtual machine function. And if you move down, you've got the AMD IO MMU, which is again, part of the virtualization setup. Next up, we've got the storage device configuration. So pre press enter and you can choose whether your ports are enabled or disabled. So this uh, particular device takes two drives. So you can have a NVMe drive, and a hard disk, so you can either enable or disable those. Again, I've left them enabled, just in case I choose to install another drive. So we'll press escape to go out of that. And now we can go into security. This is uh, pretty much redundant because most of the settings are done by the manufacturer. The only thing you can do really is set a supervisor password, which uh, you press enter to do so. And then you can go in and change other settings if you need to. Most of these I would recommend leaving as they are, especially if you plan on installing uh, or reinstalling the operating system at some point because of the way that the recovery system works and all the way Windows works. It just gets really complicated if you change anything here. So I'd recommend not to. Next up is the boot. So this is probably where most of you are going to want to go into. So you've got your boot mode, which is UEFI. No choices there. You can't choose anything other than that because of the support for Windows 10. Also, secure boot, you can't change either. That is kind of baked in. And then if you go down, you have got your boot order priority. So if at this time, when you're in the BIOS, you've actually got a USB stick installed or a USB hard disk drive, then you can choose the boot priority to uh, boot from whichever device you want to. That is a permanent change. It's not a one-time deal. So you'll have to make sure if you do change this and then you decide to then want to boot from the inbuilt drives, make sure you turn it back and set the appropriate boot option. So press escape there. And not really much more. Last one is exit. So obviously if you do make any changes and you want them to take, then choose exit save in changes. Again, just press enter and you can go through do that. Uh, you've got, if you're not sure, and you maybe you've done something you shouldn't have done, you can exit discard in changes. Also you've got uh, save and shutdown rather than save and reboot. And also, if you've made some changes and things aren't working as they should, you can choose to load the setup defaults, which uh, could help you out if you've made some changes and Windows is no longer booting. 
So that is uh, pretty much it. Not really much more you can do there. Again, this is a very, very basic BIOS. There's very limited things you can actually change apart from really the time and date and the boot order. Effectively, that is pretty much it. Quite sad really, but nice to have seen some little features in there for overclocking and that kind of stuff. That is pretty much it. Hopefully this has been useful to some of you. If it has, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button if you want to see more content like this on a regular basis. In the meantime, I'm Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews now too, and hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching. And actually, before we do go, just a little one. I know I did mention it earlier in the video, so we should show that. So if you want to get into the BIOS and you don't want to go through Windows, what you can do is we're going to save and exit as if it's going to do a reboot. So exit, save and changes. And yes, and now if we tap the uh, F2 key, whilst it's rebooting, there you go. It goes back into the BIOS setup. So yeah, nice and simple to do, and uh, hopefully this helps some of you out.